Stories about society or classism, especially in anime, are nothing new. Whatever it may be, depending on the work, you'll have a story that tackles the more darker world of such topics with an interesting narrative. But upon every anime I've watched in the last 14 years, only three now have had a focus on a world that, by all accounts, is drastically different compared to others like it. The first is Akira. The second is Terror in Resonance. And the third is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. <laughs> I got asked a number of times to watch this show, but truth be told, I never really had any interest. I never really thought Cyberpunk was my thing, honestly, so I just didn't feel up for it. And when it came to the anime, and also hearing that Trigger was doing it, my skepticism was on the higher end. Not including Cyberpunk, there were only two shows I actually liked from Trigger. Kill a Kill and Keys Nevers. Kill a Kill was chaotic from the beginning, especially considering that the same people behind Gurren Lagann were working on it as well. As for Keys Nevers, it had more focus on an internal dilemma around pain. Everything else they've done either wasn't for me, or in some way or another I felt slipped up in the second half. But after getting asked multiple times too, and finding out the show's only 10 episodes long, and hearing that the series is really well done up to the ending, that did pique my interest enough to look, and... Honestly, I get it now. Now to put this out there, if you're new or not in the know, I don't usually do this. That is, talk about a show that recently came out or just released. For one, because everyone else who can does it. If it's popular, it most likely has been covered by a nanny tuber. Also, doing videos like this is annoying because stopping everything I was doing to make a video on one fucking anime that just came out that everyone's talking about actually puts what I wanted to talk about in the back burner for longer. Hell, I already had a different anime in mind I wanted to talk about before I binged this. Two, a lot of these series that come out usually are shows that have had more than one season or so. Which, if we've learned anything from shows like Rosary of Vampire or Promise Neverland, calling it before it's finished is a terrible mistake to make. And three, well, I make it a habit to talk about older shows, even series that aren't even all that popular. I do it because it's stuff that I watch that I legitimately enjoy. The stuff that nobody's really asking me to discuss? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it because I wanna. So understand that while I realize I am sort of jumping on the bandwagon and giving this series praise, Although now that I think about it, maybe the bandwagon was all those idiots going off about how Rebecca is pedo bait because she's small and has a petite body like a child. Understand that I'm gonna talk about this because I wanna. Seriously though, if I get recommended another show before I have the chance to talk about my favorite anime, I'm going to scream. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is about a young boy named David who lives with his mom, struggling to make ends meet. After a car accident on the highway and his mom dying because she ain't rich and due to a lack of insurance, that's not relevant in any way, shape, or form. Left with no family and no money, just his mom's remains, her work uniform, and a military-grade enhancement, David decides to abandon the life his mom wanted for him and go on the run, encountering a pickpocket named Lucy who gets him involved into a crew of cyberpunks. The story follows David and the rest as they get their hands dirty for some quick cash whenever else they can get their hands on. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is what I would consider to be that of an underdog story. A story focused on a likable cast in a world that doesn't play favorites. This type of story is quite common in other forms of storytelling, but anime? Well, that's not exactly something that's all that common. From the implementation of environmental storytelling to a grounded world controlled by corporations and capitalism, to a focus on colorful protagonists and antagonists, Edge Runners is an uncomfortable, depressing, psychological, gritty, and raunchy world that, unlike a lot of shows and films and animation before it, makes it evident that despair is the only befitting end to a series like this. It's that feeling of won the battle but lost the war. I'd say the one thing that I have to give credit to for that is the atmosphere. Following our young boy David, we're introduced to a technologically advanced world. People have cybernetic enhancements and implants installed into their bodies. The world around David is... well, dirty. People outside his place just sit and stand around or sleep there. As he steps out into the world, a picture is better painted. Everyone out in the world isn't really doing much of anything, just outside and giving up. Which is weird. This world looks pretty bleak, and yet at the same time, it looks beautiful. Buildings, the vehicles, the various devices everyone uses. It really looks like a futuristic world, and yet there's this dystopian atmosphere. This whole world is explained entirely by what we see, with environmental storytelling. There's no narrator that kicks in at the beginning to explain everything for us. There's no expositional dialogue about when this happened and what became of it. You don't need that, because you can feel it. The anime addresses this world and not just how it looks, but how it feels, because we're seeing it from the perspective of David. 
a resident that's presumably lived here his whole, or at least most of his life. You may not immediately know that the society is segregated through class and capital, but you can really feel it, because it feels apathetic. It feels desperate. It feels unequal. I'd say the world building is the best part of the series outside the animation, as the story is... sort of lacking the more I think about it. Big Corporation needs main character for self-benefit. That's... kinda it. Much of what happens is just the crew's missions and rebellion for their own self-benefits, but it really doesn't do much outside of that. So it's pretty evident that the story isn't about how a group of rebels overtake corporations and a social commentary about how the people are essential for a society to operate, but rather a story about, well, people living in that society. They all got hopes and dreams. They want to have fun, find someone and hook up, survive, but that isn't anything special. Everyone either has, had, or is looking for those things in certain ways. There really isn't that much of a difference between them and some guy sleeping on the street in reality. And that's sadly the truth, and more along the idea I think they were going for. These people aren't the ones that stand above the crowd and work for a better tomorrow. These are people that either just want to make a living, or want to leave what they consider a hell. As for the characters... Maybe it's due to the fact that I've been so exposed to various stories and fiction over the years, but... I kind of figured that the story was going to go the way it was going to go with these characters. It's like being a fan of heist films or heist games than watching The Great Pretender. Don't get me wrong, I do love the characters for what we see of them throughout it, but I'm not going to lie to you and say this was the most depressing anime I've seen out there. But for what we get, I do like the focus on some of the characters that get it. I will admit that some characters could have had more time, but honestly with the world building and everything going on, I'd say it had just crammed too much into a series that doesn't have enough time. I've heard some people say that it should have been longer because it ended too quick, but... I'ma just say, if you haven't watched Mekaku City Actors, I don't think saying the series had a rushed ending is the best comic to make about Edge Runners. Personally, while I would have liked seeing more focus on other characters, I think what we got actually did what it wanted. I may not have been crying in the end, but... I'd say I felt the same to this as I did when I decided to pick up Halo Reach. Bittersweet. The animation and art is just... beautiful. With the use of coloring and lighting, half the time to me with just how it looked, I have expected to find out that Ilya Kushinov was involved in this anime. Who called it? I called it! Boom! I called it. Not to mention, this might be one of the few anime series out there that really takes advantage of the fact that it's a mature rated series, because there's a number of scenes in this series that I can't actually show without outright doing what Fifi does. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt something? Speaking of which, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Rebecca. To those not in the know, God, I fucking envy you. But to those unaware, CD Projekt Red supposedly was against the inclusion of Rebecca because they didn't want a Lolita character in their series, to which Trigger did not agree on. And that's when... the internet got set on fire. Which I don't understand how that's possible at this point. How many times can you burn down something before it just won't light anymore? <sighs> but whatever, the internet went cray cray and got on Rebecca for being a kid and Edge Runner sexualizing her and everyone else defending it with short people exist, dumbasses. I've already talked about this before, but I'll add on to it after watching the show. Honestly? I'd have an issue with it, if it weren't for two things. Context, and atmosphere. I mean, they do obviously show that there are kids in this series, but all of them from the looks of it just either go to the academy David went to, or just don't show up in the series. Like at all. Pretty much everyone in the show is an adult. What makes Becca any different? What, that she's shorter than everyone and doesn't have balloon tits or a fat ass? You know what's funny about this too? Up until the midway point of the show, the character that was an actual minor was the main character, who ended up getting laid early on. It's funny to me how neither social media nor CD Projekt Red got pissed off at this. Oh yeah, that's right. He's the main character, meaning that if he ends up clapping cheeks with a woman who's older than him, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just like the hit JRPG, Persona 5. You know, one of these days, I'm gonna piss off the wrong incel and they're gonna try fighting me because I talk shit about their favorite JRPG. At this point, it's a game. If they do it, I win. And they know that. <laughs> Outside of that, the music? One of the few series that feels so distinct with its music utilization. Normally, music in anime is mostly just an atmosphere setter, taking both in account the characters in the world. Kekai Sensen had more of an urban-esque soundtrack feeling both jazz and foreign at times, not unlike the show's premise of utilizing Inner City with an alien world crossing over. 
Terror and Resonance had a soundtrack that focused more on tension, depression, anxiety, despair, but also a glimmer of freedom. Not unlike the series, focusing on tension-filled moments, characters engrossed with depression, anxiety, and caring feelings of despair, but at times feeling free of societies, or rather, the world's restrictions. Edge Runners has a soundtrack that feels retro, laid-back, hopeful, and even triumphant, but also bleak and even heart-sinking. It's all there, it's all on display from the get-go. But most notably, it feels distinctively westernized. I don't want to say specifically American because most of the music is rock and roll more like the 80s to 90s, because most beloved music groups are from different parts of the world. They've just become more immersed and even associated with American culture. But alongside music, there's this lack of cultural differences from places such as Japan with its world building. There's more inclusion of firearms, more bloodshed, more focus on poverty, prejudice, and class separation through capital, and normalization of both raunchiness, sauciness, as well as nudity. In a majority of animation in Japan, they do incorporate this, but it always feels like there's a point, or they utilize it to make the audience feel uncomfortable, exaggerate to cartoonish levels for comedy or atmosphere. Here, it genuinely feels every day. It feels like this world is as is and the characters are living in it, rather than the world being as is and the characters wanting to stand against it, or characters being focused on in more of a power fantasy wish fulfillment-esque way. Even when there's a focus in the sense of despair in most series, it's usually accompanied with a narrative of, while definitely still an underdog story, a triumphant one. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is by all accounts an underdog story, but not the one that gets much of a focus. The Dark Underdog. The story of the unsung fighters. The ones that made an impression on the world, but never any major accomplishments, and their lives don't change anything about the world itself. Rather, sometimes reconfirming its biased and flawed justification and self-centeredness. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a rare anime, not necessarily for how depressing it is, but for how believable it is, for how it feels, for how it presents itself. And for that, it was indeed a memorable experience. <laughs>